Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer. Welcome to Dark Lord Reviews, my fellow viewers. And for today's video, I'm going to review Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is a 1964 Christmas stop-motion animated TV special produced by Rake and Bass Productions. It first aired Sunday on December 6, 1964 on the NBC television network in the U.S. The special is based on the Johnny Marks song Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, which was itself based on the poem of the same name written in 1939 by Marks' brother-in-law, Robert L. May. And tell you the truth, and this is very, very, Controversial. I never saw this as a kid. No! So I thought this year, why not watch it for the first time? So without further ado, this is Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. We begin with a terrible snowstorm. Jeez, 2020 just got worse. Anyways, we meet the narrator of the story, Sam the Snowman, who welcomes the viewers to Christmas Town at the North Pole. What's the matter? Haven't you ever seen a talking snowman before? Not one that looks at Frosty the Snowman and Colonel Sanders. We are then introduced to Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus, who live in a castle located left to the Christmas tree forest. Papa, you haven't touched a morsel. Did she just call him Papa? I'm busy, Mama. It's almost Christmas. Did he just call her Mama? Who wrote this, Mike Pence? Who ever heard of a skinny Santa? Well, you never been to a Chippendales on Christmas before? Anyway, Sam recalls the year Christmas was almost canceled due to a big snowstorm and how a very special reindeer saved the day. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the motherfucking red-nosed reindeer. A flashback where Donner, Santa's lead reindeer, and his wife have given birth to a new fawn named Rudolph. Upon admiring him, they are surprised to see that he's been born with a glowing red nose. He's... he's got a shiny nose. Sh shiny? I'd even say it glow. That's pretty on the nose, don't you think? When Santa arrives, he is horrified by Rudolph's nose, and he warns Donner that Rudolph will not make the sled team because of his nose. So Donner decides to hide it by covering it with mud, so Rudolph will fit in with the other reindeer. Well, what happened to unconditional love, Donner? We later meet Hermie, an elf who doesn't want to make toys in Santa's workshop because he wants to be a dentist. A uh, dentist? Well, we need one up here. Especially with the amount of sugary sweets they eat. Now listen you, you're an elf, and elves make toys. Now get to work. Ten minutes break. Job or you're fired. Wow, Santa's workshop is just as bad as her apple workshop. Then we see Rudolph getting a fake nose from his father. Daddy, I don't like it. You'll like it and wear it. Oh, but Daddy, it's not very comfortable. There are more important things than comfort. Self-respect. Jeez, you're an asshole. Anyways, the new fawns are taken to the reindeer games, where they are trained and inspected by Santa to pull the sleigh when they grow up. However, we've got a song the elves made for Santa. Looks like he's not enjoying it, but she is. Hmm, well, it needs work. I have to go. What does Papa know? It's beautiful. You keep it just the way it was. Papa? Papa! Stop calling him Papa. The elf boss is upset when he learns that Hermie isn't doing his elf duties. You'll never fit in. Now you come to elf practice and learn how to wiggle your ears and chuckle warmly and go hee hee and ho ho and important stuff like that. Again, just as bad as an apple workshop. Uh, I, I guess I'm on my own now. Yeah, you're better off without those assholes. 
We cut back to Rudolph and the other fawns at flight practice with their coach, Comet. During flight practice, Rudolph meets a doe named Clarice, who tells him he is cute, making Rudolph fly. Well, it turns out the power of love does help. However, while celebrating with the other bucks, Rudolph's fake nose falls off. Nani? Causing the other reindeer to mock him. Daughter, you should be ashamed of yourself. What a pity. He had a nice takeoff, too. You too, Santa, you fucking asshole. Then Comet expels him from the reindeer games. Damn, the North Pole's more toxic than Twitter. At least Clarice doesn't discriminate him. That is touching. Truly it is. But it's making me sick. However, Clarice's dad breaks it up. Now there's one thing I want to make very plain. No doe of mine is going to be seen with a, a red-nosed reindeer. That's right, sis. Rudolph then meets Hermie. Hey, what do you say we both be independent together, huh? You wouldn't mind my red nose? Not if you don't mind me being a dentist. It's a deal. And they decide to run away together. They then meet a prospector named Yukon Cornelius, who has searched his whole life to find silver and gold, but never does. I'll give you a lift. Hop aboard, mateys. <clears throat> However, the abominable snow monster of the north is after them. Luckily, they escape on a chunk of ice. Meanwhile, Donner felt bad about how he treated Rudolph and leaves to find him. Mrs. Donner wanted to go along, naturally, but Donner said, No, this is man's work. And he's sexist as hell. And no sooner did the man of the house leave when Mrs. Donner and Clarice decided to set out on their own. Hashtag feminism, hashtag hashtag feminism. <laughs> Meanwhile, the crew crash land on the island of misfit toys, where unloved and unwanted toys live with their ruler, a winged lion named King Moonracer, who brings the toys to the island until he can find homes and children who would love them. Jack in the box for children to shout, a scooter for Jimmy, a dolly for Stay this island seems like Marcia's paradise. It's cute. Mm. Anyways, the trio asks permission from the king, and he allows them to stay one night on the island until they can get Santa to find home for the misfit toys by Christmas when they get home. A toy is never truly happy until it is loved by a child. Again, I know someone who is interested in these toys. They decide to leave the next day. However, Rudolph leaves the island on his own, still worried that his nose will endanger his friends. Time passes and Rudolph grows into a young stag, and still enduring mockery from others. Hey, look who's back! Omnia knows! <laughs> He returns home to find that his parents and Clarice have been looking for him for months. He sets out again to locate them and finds them all cornered in a cave by the snow monster. Rudolph tries to save Clarice, but the monster hits him in the head with a stalactite. Luckily, Hermie and Yukon Cornelius return and try to save Rudolph. Hermie, oaking like a pig, lures the monster out of the cave and pulls out his teeth after Yukon Cornelius knocks him out. Yukon Cornelius then dies, the toothless monster back only to fall over the cliff. Wow, even the dogs went out with him. Mourning Yukon Cornelius' death, Rudolph, Hermie, Clarice, and the Donners return home where everyone apologizes to them. After hearing their story, Santa promises Rudolph that he will find homes for the misfit toys. And you need an HR department, or an ER, whichever. The head elf tells Hermie that he can open his own dentist office a week after Christmas. He's gonna have a lot of fun pulling out your teeth. And Donner apologizes for being hard on Rudolph. Yukon Cornelius returns with a tame snow monster, now tamed to decorate a tree, explaining that the snow monster's bouncing ability spared their lives. Christmas Eve comes, and while everybody is celebrating, Santa reluctantly announces that the big snowstorm won't subside in time and has forced him to cancel Christmas. Oh! 
boo-hoo. Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. But is soon inspired by Rudolph's red nose. He asked Rudolph to leave his sleigh, and Rudolph accepts. I knew that nose would be useful someday. Bullshit. Anyways, they fly off to the island of misfit toys, who are sad that they're being left alone and unloved again. Well, it's Christmas Eve, but... Looks like we're forgotten again. Then they are suddenly cheered up when Santa arrives to pick them up. Okay, Rudolph, full power. And the toys are dropped with umbrellas, except for him. And Santa wishes everyone a Merry Christmas as he and Rudolph fly off into the night. And that was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. The film is, has been critically acclaimed and praised for its heartwarming celebration of being different and its spirited soundtrack. And since its premiere, it has become a beloved holiday film. Given that this is my first time watching the film, I can see why it's so very beloved. Yeah, personally, I enjoyed the film. It brings back that childlike wonder of Christmas. It was very heartwarming, I liked the songs, and I also found both Rudolph and Hermie very sympathetic to me. The film gets the point across that being different makes you special in some way. And it does. So suck it, normies. Anyways, I love this film. Go check it out. And that was the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. And seriously, subscribe. I checked the graphs. Look at that. That's fucking embarrassing. So yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Seriously, it helps me out. Anyways, happy holidays, and stay safe out there. Goodbye. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say... Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him, as they shouted out with glee. Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history.